In March 2018, Jason Wesha dropped off his three-year-old little girl, Hannah, at her babysitter's house. It was their routine and had been for eight months at that point. Since they lived in the same neighborhood, Jason would drive past on his way to work before picking Hannah up at the end of the day. Only this day, that's not what happened. After only getting a few minutes down the road, Jason received a panicked call from the babysitter. Hannah had collapsed and was unresponsive. Jason must not have understood what he was hearing. How had the healthy little girl he saw moments ago collapsed? It turned out that was not going to be an easy question to answer. Hannah Weshe was born on January 11, 2015, to parents Jason Weshe and Adrian Latham. Jason was a single father to little Hannah for most of her life, as her mother, Adrian, was arrested for selling and using heroin. Hannah was born addicted to heroin, as her mother failed to stop using while pregnant. While she certainly didn't have an easy start in life, Hannah grew into a bright young toddler with a real zest for life. She loved to play and was her dad's entire world. Everything he did was for his daughter. Two of Hannah's favorite things were eating cereal and watching television shows with her dad. When Hannah was around two years old, Jason and she moved to a new home on Shank Road in Hamilton, Ohio. Jason had found a job at a construction company just down the road, so it made sense to make the move. Since he was going to be out of the house working, Jason needed someone to look after little Hannah. That someone ended up being Lindsay Parton. Lindsay seemed like exactly the type of person you would want watching your child. The diminutive mother of two, who stood just 4'11 tall, lived around 4050 Shank Road, not far from Jason and Hannah's home. She resided there with her longtime partner Timothy Smith and the couple's two daughters. But Lindsay's qualifications weren't just that she was a mother herself. She had an associate degree in preschool education and had begun babysitting babysitting to earn some extra income. Other than babysitting babysitting, Lindsay worked as a bookkeeper for her father's business and as a Mary Kay consultant, a popular multi-level marketing company. Lindsay first started babysitting Hannah in 2017. Hannah was with her from 7 a.m. five days a week for between 8 and 12 hours a day. Jason paid her $30 a day, but was admittedly often behind on his payments. As a single father, money was tight, and he struggled to balance raising Hannah, working full-time, and paying for her child care. Unbeknownst to Jason, in the lead-up to the March incident, Lindsay had been going through some tough times in her personal life. She had suffered a miscarriage, and her relationship was going through a particularly rough patch. With her still working and caring for three young children, Hannah and her girls, it's not hard to see why Lindsay would have been in a fragile state. Around this time, Hannah's grandfather noticed some bruising on her chest. When he asked her about it, she told him the babysitter did it. But Lindsay explained Hannah had taken a tumble after falling. This didn't strike him as particularly odd at the time. Hannah was a rambunctious little girl who had loads of energy, and at her age, it was not uncommon for children to take the occasional tumble. Hannah seemed to love Lindsay, and Jason often watched on as she ran up to her house, excited for the day ahead. The morning of March 8, 2018, started like any other. Jason woke up early for work and got Hannah dressed to drop her off with Lindsay like he had done so for the past eight months. He was running slightly behind schedule, but he still got Hannah in her warm coat and boots for the brisk day ahead. Hannah often took the short drive down the street sitting on her dad's lap, but that day, she asked to lie down in the back seat. Jason's day should have gone like usual, putting in his hours to provide for Hannah before he got to pick up his little girl at the end of the day. Usually when I go to Lindsay, she wants to sit in my lap because she liked to drive. Um, but that morning, she didn't want to get in the front seat. She wanted to lay in the back seat. After dropping her off at around 7 a.m., Jason had only gotten a few minutes down the road when he received a frantic call from Lindsay, telling him he needed to get back to her house right away. Hannah had fallen unconscious, and she wasn't waking up. Jason made a U-turn and told her he would be there soon and that she needed to call 911. Yes, I can hear you. What's going on? Okay, my name is Lindsay. I babysit kids. 
Yeah. And we just dropped her off, and um, all of a sudden she just passed out. <laughs> she said, Who's passed out? The little girl, she's three. She, she fell pretty bad yesterday, and she's okay. been fine. And then all of a sudden we dropped her off this morning, and she walked in, and she kind of passed out. She went limp. Okay. I don't know. Are you with her now? Yes, and those are bad. I called her. Yes, her. She's bad. There's something wrong. Okay. Is she awake right now? Yes. No, no, no. Stay on the line with me. I have to ask you two questions while my partner gets the medics dispatched. Okay. Is she breathing? Yes, in and out. Okay. Yes, in and out. I don't know what's wrong. Okay. Is her breathing completely normal? Oh, yes. Yeah, almost gone. Hurry, please. Okay. Stay down on her back. Nice out. Lay her down on her back and let her head okay, tilt back. Okay. And she's still unconscious, correct? Yes. As you just heard, Lindsay tells the operator that Hannah had a bad fall the previous day. Jason arrived halfway through the call and could be heard in the background trying to get his daughter to wake up. No, she's not unconscious. She's, she's, her eyes are open and she's like gasping for air. What's the matter? She's fucking shock or something. I don't know what, what could be wrong with her. I don't know. She's a fine. Who just walked in the house? She got up, brushed her teeth. I don't know. I Lindsay, it's okay. They're on the way. Hey. 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 Look at Daddy. Anna. Wake up. You're okay. I love you. Anna. I love you, Buttercup. Hey. So wake up. There we go. First responders rushed to the scene and were shown inside by Lindsay. Hannah was lying on the living room couch. She was still unresponsive. Hannah's eyes were open, but they fluttered around the room, unable to fix anything. She was loaded up into the waiting ambulance and rushed to Fort Hamilton Hospital, where the emergency team was waiting. Unfortunately, it was too late. With her family and loved ones gathered around her bed, they were told the devastating news. Hannah's injuries were an immediate red flag for the medical professionals who had worked on her. This was not something that happened from an accidental fall. But Hannah had been doing just that before she was dropped off with Lindsay that morning. Both Lindsay and Jason had stated such. Lindsay was brought to the police station for questioning, and she denied she had done anything to cause Hannah's injuries. In fact, Lindsay told the detectives that Hannah had arrived at her house before with bruising on her face, insinuating the marks had come from Jason. Have you seen her come to the house? with bruises on her face yeah before the accident yesterday yes so she had bruises on her face this week yeah mm -hmm. where happened? before she saw the train like when i was like right here and then she had one on her chin it was one on the chin from when she fell on the gravel those that got worse there was there was one on her chin before that and then when she fell on the gravel like, so there's bruises before yeah it got worse, worse. But yeah okay. yeah yeah and chef when she Her heel over her baby on the rock and like, yeah, and she better tell me too. Okay. All right, um, I don't want to. Do you want me to give him a call? No, I want to call my lawyer. I just, it, I'm completely honestly telling the truth and I would never lie. I don't, I know I wouldn't lie to anybody. And, yeah. yeah. Now, if you want to call your lawyer, I mean, do you still want to talk to us? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know if I want to. I don't know what I'm supposed to do. I don't know what I'm supposed to do. You're doing it. This is, this is what you're supposed to be doing, helping us. I'll do anything I can, Dal. I just, well, we do appreciate it. I, anything is going to be able to help us out with cannabis, you know? And I know that you want to do She's our main concern. She's, she's, she's been my main concern. <clears throat> so for how long has she been your main concern? So, she's my mom. My husband didn't know mom. Yeah, there's a big difference. When you don't have nurturing and love, and I'm not saying that you didn't do that, but women are different. Right. Like, even last night after I was putting the vapor up on her face, she looked at me and said, Love you, buddy. You take good care of me. I really, I'm honestly in shock. I don't. It was literally 30 seconds to a minute him dropping her off. And us walking in the house. Okay. And she collapsed. 
I hadn't even shut the door behind me yet. You had not shut the door yet, but you told me that you were walking in towards the kitchen with your donuts. No, I hadn't even shut it. You hadn't shut it. I didn't have to even shut it. No. So you weren't in the same room with her when she turned around to you? No, I was. I was still. So here's the door. Here's that chair. Here she is. I put my phone down. I to take off my robe. And she looked up. I have a couple questions I want to ask you. Sure. Hey, listen to yeah. me. And I don't know if you... Since you've been in here talking to me, because I've been meeting with my boss, if you've been talking about an attorney or anything, so I just want to make sure we're, we're because I have a couple more questions I want to ask yes. you, but I want to make sure you are still well aware of your rights. Yeah. Okay. So I just want to go. Through, wrong. I, and, and I realize that you should. Right. Lindsay told the detectives that when Hannah was dropped off that morning, she seemed her usual self even telling them she asked for a donut moments before collapsing. The detectives left the room for a moment, and when they did, Lindsay was recorded muttering something to herself. I'm going to prison for the rest of my life, she whispered. During the second part of the interrogation, Lindsay told the detectives that, on March 7th, Hannah had hit her head on concrete flooring after she fell. The day before that, March 6th, she apparently hit her head as well, this time after falling off of a toy train set. Once they wrapped up the questioning, Lindsay was released. There wasn't enough evidence to prove she had anything to do with Hannah's injuries, and further investigative work was needed. The next day, however, she was brought in again. This time, the detectives were armed with photographs of the bruising over Hannah's body. They asked Lindsay how Hannah had gotten these bruises, and she then told them a new part of the story. Lindsay explained that when Hannah was dropped off on March 8th, she had tripped and fallen at her entranceway, hitting her head on a concrete step. Lindsay continued that Hannah got up, asked her for a donut, and then collapsed. She fell on the door and hit the concrete step. She when? tripped Thursday morning. Walking in the walking yeah. out the house? Yes. Tell us about it. Take us through it. Details. When I opened up the door, she was coming through, and she slipped on that concrete step in the metal part. She had the metal part on her eye. Which door? The, the one. Door yeah, the one into, into the house, the carpet. And so I got her back up, and she stood up and looked up at me and did say, I want a donut and the couch, and then collapsed. So, she, so you know, you know, you're very aware of bruises. Oh yeah, yeah. I look like couple bruises from when she fell. She literally, so she had on um, cowboy boots with the heels. Yeah. And Vivian took off running and I was kind of behind them. Um, far behind them. I should have been up closer. We'll, 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 we'll get into all that. Okay. Here. We're going to show you some pictures. Okay. But, uh, so we just kind of want you to point out okay. all the bruises and all the okay. small little nicks and scratches that you were aware of gotcha. and exactly how they happened okay. and all that stuff. Okay. Okay. Yes. That's a lot of okay. truth. Okay. Um, they may or may not be easy to look at. Yeah. Okay. Just start off just to give you a, with the pebbles that you got wrong with you fell. Okay. It's it's not pebbles. I mean it's a gravel driveway. Like right. it's not pebbles. It's okay. TJ just redid it and it's I mean it's rocks. It's rocks. Yeah, it's rocks. It's not okay. pebbles. Okay. <laughs> yep. Exactly where she fell and on her chin. She didn't even her hand didn't even hit. Like she just she what she was doing, and I can show you how she was running, running like this, and then looked back and went like that. Literally. Did she slide? Or? No. It was just bam. Bam. Yeah. She did and she got right back up and kept running. I said, Hey, are you okay? I'm okay. So so all these so all these small little bruises. And the ones on the chin. Yes, I know about those right there. And even yes. the one on the yes, chin. Yes, the one on the chin, yep. And the neck. There. Yep. Yep, that's all that. From that. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. I saw so, that. I mean, the neck too. Yes. Up under her chin like that. So. so well, she went extended pretty far. She, she went like that. Yeah. The detectives had now gotten some more information out of Lindsay, but they still didn't feel they were getting the full truth. A trip on the concrete step could not have caused all of her injuries, and why they raised this issue with Lindsay. She again changed her story. She now said that she was carrying Hannah when the pair of them fell, 
indicating that she had fallen on Hannah and Hannah's head had hit the metal part of the concrete step. Still, this didn't explain the bruising, so the detectives asked again. The doctor said when this injury occurred, she was out. She wasn't. This is I thought I would be completely that's, this, that's not what happened. She wouldn't be able to talk. That's not what happened. It was, there was a more severe accident that happened that, that just like this accident, you're afraid to tell us for some reason. Okay? I'm not afraid to tell you anything. Well, you were afraid to tell us that. Well, because we, I got through that. We got, all right. Lost our we, you know, we got through that. And we're going to get through this. Get through this. Okay? Okay. Because that's, that's, that's what we're doing. Yeah. So, so tell us. That's exactly, I suppose. That's, that's not what happened. It is. She no. slipped in the. No. Okay, I did not. I she didn't fall 12 inches. And traumatically bruise her. She falls. To the point where they have to cut a piece of her skull off to relieve pressure. It's not what happened. Especially, yeah, especially on a. The bones right here are extremely weak. In order to do that much damage, they're, they're, weak, they're weak for a reason. No, all of them. They're weak for a reason. They break because they're like crumple zones in a car. That's why they break. No broken bones here. Okay. Yeah. That absolutely did not do that. Even the surgeon said that. Okay. So that's not what happened. So tell us what really happened. That's really what happened. Well, that's not what happened. We're I beyond don't, that. We're beyond don't, that. I don't know what else to Listen, say. Listen, you tell us that she's on top of a, a toy. Mm -hmm. Okay. And she falls face first. Yeah. The day before. Yeah. Gets up and goes on about her business. She did. She did. never happened. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So she, the next day, she falls into a step that's probably this tall, this tall up off the ground. Mm -hmm. She's this tall. That's what foot and first and first. Yeah, she's slipping. Okay, you have kids. Yeah. We didn't have kids. Yeah. You you really think that her falling twelve inches, hitting her eye is going to make her brain swell? No, that's what I don't understand. Right, right. because that's not like something more traumatic. Something more. Traumatic. I I believe you, but I, I did not hurt her. What is, we're not saying you hurt her. We're saying you were there for the accident. Yeah, that was okay? the accident. Because that's exactly what happened. And that was not the accident. That's not what it is. We know that without a doubt. Okay? That didn't happen. She has no broken bones in her face. Okay? I mean, this is a common thing to get broken when somebody's head right. falls, okay? That's not broken. Breaks easily to protect your brain. Yeah. Okay? I thought it was. Yeah. And there's no broken bones in her face. So that's not what happened. Okay? You know, we've, we've come a long way. We, we, we got past that. Okay? Yeah. You're right there. You're right there. Thank you. My husband and I dropped her. And I slipped on the bell. So I slipped on her blanket when I opened the door. And we both went down, and she hit that concrete step really hard. Holding her on the left side. When I slipped, it hit her side. I actually hit my head on the door coming down, but she smacked her face, her, whole, her, her head really hard on the concrete step. That is when Lindsay said that after they fell, Hannah began crying for her father, so she shook her. She told them that her head had snapped back and forth and even mentioned possibly dropping the little girl during this. As the detectives still pushed further, Lindsay once again shifted things around. She said that before Hannah had fallen, she was crying for her father, and this caused Lindsay to shake her until she stopped crying. As for the bruising, which doctors noted was at different stages of healing, Lindsay admitted to smacking and punching Hannah a few times in the days before March 8th. She told the detectives about her problems, like her miscarriage and relationship trouble, and said that she had been under a high amount of stress. So, when Hannah grabbed a bottle of ketchup and squirted it down the toilet, Lindsay said she lost her temper. Lindsay Parton was promptly arrested and charged with assault and child endangering. A search warrant was executed to go through Lindsay's devices, and when this was approved, some interesting discoveries were made. On March 7th, at around 9 a.m., she googled how to get rid of a bruise. She then deleted the search. At her first court appearance, Lindsay pleaded not guilty to the charges. She posted bond later that day and was released awaiting trial. 
Hannah's condition continued to worsen, and on March 18th, ten days after the incident, she passed away. This was now a homicide case. Lindsay Parton's trial began in April 2019. It lasted eight days and saw various medical professionals take the stand to testify on Hannah's injuries, one of whom stated that the injury she suffered would have happened right before she fell unconscious, meaning Hannah could not have been walking around with this injury beforehand. The footage from the interrogation rooms was played for the court, with the prosecution highlighting the multiple times Lindsay lied to detectives. So, what is Lindsay's defense? Despite the detailed confession she had made to the authorities, Lindsay now claimed the confession had been coerced out of her. She said they had pushed her to admit to hurting Hannah because if she didn't, Jason would likely be prosecuted for his own daughter's death. However, there was a major problem with this claim. It still didn't address what caused Hannah's injuries. Lindsay doubled down on what she had first told the detectives. Hannah was absolutely fine when she walked in. Nothing happened in her home, and then she collapsed. Lindsay also said that the mentions of her previously smacking Hannah were not true either. Melinda Cook. Howard was representing Lindsay for the defense, and it's not entirely surprising to hear who they chose to blame. Melinda argued that Jason was the one who inflicted the injuries on Hannah, saying he was emotionless when pictures of her were shown during the testimony and that he had lied to investigators about getting milk at Walmart on March 7th. Jason said this was nothing more than him getting his times confused with all the stress of what was happening with Hannah, but Melinda said it was him forming some sort of alibi. It is interesting to note that Jason readily accepted a polygraph test when offered by the authorities, which he passed. Lindsay refused to take one. While the results cannot be used in a trial, they do raise questions about which party felt guilty. After closing statements, the jury deliberated for 12 hours. Lindsay Parton was found guilty on charges of murder. She received a sentence of life in prison, which has a mandatory term of 15 years and an additional 36 months for the child endangering charges. Lindsay will only be eligible for parole after serving 18 years behind bars. All the while, Lindsay Parton, shackled in an orange jail jumpsuit, shows no emotion. That is, until her friends and family plead for the judge to show mercy. Following the verdict, Lindsay's legal team announced their intention to appeal her conviction. She's an upstanding citizen, mother and wife, and has the support of her community. Parton maintains her innocence and plans to appeal this, her attorney, Melinda Cook Howard, said. Lindsay's cousin also spoke, saying, I think there have been errors made in this case. We believe that Lindsay is innocent, and we will be looking into appeal, and we believe that justice will be served, and in the end, the truth will come out about what really happened to Hannah. Her family and attorneys say Parton maintains her innocence. We believe that Lindsay is innocent, and we will be looking into appeal. Jason also reacted to the conviction, expressing his deep anger towards Lindsay for what she did to Hannah. I hope she never gets out of jail for what she did to my daughter. I hope and pray every single day that you get the same treatment in jail that you showed my daughter, he said. It's rough never being able to see my daughter again. Never being able to talk to her, hold her, touch her, sleep with her, play with her, it's rough. In October 2019, an appeal was filed on Lindsay's behalf. It alleged legal errors and claimed Lindsay had received ineffective assistance from counsel. The appeal stated this was because Lindsay's team had not effectively filed a motion to suppress her interrogation statements to investigators from being submitted into evidence. It also brought up supposed undisclosed information by the state prosecution. The state filed its response in January 2020 and maintained that Lindsay's own confessions and the various expert witnesses support her conviction, and therefore, the appeal should not be granted. Judge Robert Ringland sided with the state, finding they had provided sufficient evidence to convict Lindsay Parton of the crimes. The most recent update came in September 2022 when Lindsay spoke to Metro.co.uk. 
She explained how much she misses her daughters and dreads going to sleep each night since she knows she will dream of being with them, only to wake up disappointed the next morning, realizing where she is. I want the world to know I am implicitly innocent. I would never hurt anyone, especially a child, Lindsay says. She mentioned possible warning signs of Hannah's poor health in the weeks leading up to her death saying she had a headache almost every day and wanted to nap more often than usual. Lindsay claimed she made Jason aware of this, and he said it might be Hannah's allergies acting up. As for what happened on March 8th, Lindsay maintains she had nothing to do with Hannah's death. I was scared and confused. I didn't know what was happening, she told the network. I didn't hurt Hannah ever. That's not who I am. I don't deserve this. Do you think Lindsay is innocent, or do you think she is where she belongs?